So every year I've taught, hey, this is how you make a video. This is the components that you should have in a video. And this is how you post it. And this is why it's valuable to have videos as marketing source. That has been always my, the message, right? N now that they're calling it creating effective marketing videos, I'm actually going to change uh, the approach. And my approach is about, well, what is effectiveness when it comes to video marketing, right? So it's not just about people now being inspired to create a video. I think people should be inspired if they're going to get into video to talk about what effectiveness is. And, and I'll, I'll break it down. We have about, about 10 minutes or so. So I'll see how much I can cover from it. So effectiveness uh, from, from a video would be getting, I would say at the most simplest level is getting someone to watch it, right? If people don't watch it, then obviously it has zero F potentiality to be effective, right? Um, it, so people, at the end of the day, the video needs to drive new business, right? That's, that's ultimately what effectiveness is effectiveness is the problem is there's multiple layers and steps to get there so the first thing of being effective is getting people to watch it right so we'll, i'm going to talk about what gets people to watch it so we'll talk about uh discoverability so how to do basic research in youtube to find out what's trending what are people searching for so hopefully through just a simple search they can find your topic i will talk a lot about being hyper specialized Whereas I prefer that three potential buyers watch my video than a, a million random people watch my video. And, and the point is that unless I'm making money off ads or something like that, um, which is another business model, so I'll, I'll discuss that briefly because I don't want to talk too much about that. Just because I've, I've spent five years and I make you know, a couple bucks from video ads, from ads and, and, and advertising. And I don't think was my intention in the first place. And that's not what I want. I actually want clients to call me from YouTube, which is really what, what, what happens in real life. And that's why my YouTube channel is so valuable. But anyway, so the first layer of effectiveness is getting people to watch it, which means getting, getting it discovered and, and using hyper, hyper topics that, uh, that there isn't other videos on. Like anybody can make a video about how to reconcile the banks in QuickBooks, right? The problem is you're going to compete with 30 other videos. But if somebody says, uh, how, to how to reconcile my bank in QuickBooks for a farming business, right? Your video may be the only one. Again, you're narrowing, you're, you're, you're making a narrow statement about the video and who is it for. Although most accountants would argue that it's the same, it doesn't matter what type of business it is. But customers don't know this. Like customers don't know that reconciling a bank or a financial statement or a balance sheet or inventory is the same for a farming business than for a manufacturing business or for a you know, wholesaler business. So when you make a video and you use examples that don't uh, relate to your customers, your customers don't have a, a, an accounting background. So they're automatically gonna think, oh, this is for a different type of business, this is not for me. So you may need to go narrow, narrow, narrow to find more effective, effectiveness in actually getting the folks that you want to open up their wallets and send you money to watch. So that's some, I'm going to talk about that and discoverability and just doing some general research to figure out what topics to use. So that's one level of it, right? So just getting people to click, getting people to watch. So that's layer one. And Kirk, if I was coaching you on video, this, this is exactly what I would be teaching you. The second layer would be, okay, so you got someone to click. Great. We, we got over that very difficult task is to get someone to click, right? It's like, kind of like getting, get customers in the store. Now we need to make sure that people watch the entire video or at least get to the point until your call to action it's there right the the effectiveness when it comes to uh the watching part of the video is you know did your did your message transmit did the person understand what you were trying to say and are the next steps clear and if the next steps are to call you or contact you is that path simple right um, like if your next step is go to my website and contact me and then you, you go to your website and it takes like eight clicks to find the phone number, obviously there's something very ineffective about the way you're doing this process, right? So we have to now think about during the, the video itself, during the content, what does effectiveness mean? What do you want the client to get out of that video? Do you want them to call you? you want them to email you? Do you want them to remember you? So when they do call you a year later, they remember who you, who you are, what you stand for, 
and have a higher probability of buying from you? Or do you want them to remember you as the expert so they're not ready to buy now, but when they're ready to buy three years from now, they're okay with paying three times the price because it's already in their subconscious that you're the man or you're the woman for the job. So that's the second level of it is how do we create effectiveness around uh, the, the, the viewable portion of it, right? And then I'm going to show you some tools in YouTube where you can actually see something called a drop-off where you actually you, you get stats around when people are logging off and you can use that information if, if you see a pattern where you see a big dip on when people like stop watching your video, find out what you said, how you said it, if there was some issue with the noise or quality, or maybe you ranted off to some other topic, find out what is turning people off from your video. So when you make the new one, you adjust from that. So that would be like, that's, that's that piece. And then we'll talk about uh, effectiveness after the video, which is how do you use your video platforms to improve all other aspects of your business uh, or, and or create new service streams. So I'll give you one interesting one is I do one-on-one -on -one training sessions with QuickBooks and I charge a price. And I, we ask the client, do you want a recorded copy uh, that doesn't go into YouTube, right? A private recorded copy. And they say, yes, that's an extra hundred bucks. And, and all I had to do is click a button, record and send it to charge an extra hundred bucks. All of a sudden, I'm increasing 20, 25% of my revenue with a single client because they find having a recorded, a recording of that valuable. Now that's inferred that we're not allowed to record the session. So when the client tells me, Hey, I want to record your session. I tell them, no, now I can't prevent them if they're recording it otherwise, but most people are respectful towards it. I say, no, no, that's not a recorded session. Why it's a recorded session more expensive than a non-recorded session. You would ask, especially if you're not a value pricer, you would say, well, the effort is the same, right? So why is that cost costing any more? Well, if you're being recorded and you're a professional that holds a license and you're watching TV, you're watching you know, the news, um, what you say and, and how you say and how you practice can be held against you, you know, if you're being recorded, right? So you have to think about, so now so I have to up my game a little bit. I have to maybe add more disclaimers. It is possible that something that takes five minutes to explain because it has no ifs or buts around it, right? Or no disclaimers or no general rule, no exception to the rule. I have to be a little bit more lengthy, more explain, more explainful. I don't know if that's a word. I have to be more explainful and maybe I have to cite my work too. I have to say, okay, based on what you're telling me, this is what I think you should do. And by the way, let me search it real quick. Let me send you a link of the IRS website that supports what I'm saying. So there's just a lot more work around being recorded and the client needs to understand that and the client does value that. So you charge a little bit more for it. So that's something that recording YouTube videos inspired me to add as an additional service. And I would say only 15 to 20% buy it, but the ones I do, they love it. It's like a personal, it's like a personal coach, you know, in their computer. And you were talking about mentorship. So you get, so, so the, the, you know, what are the things that your YouTube channel can inspire your business to do? The other piece that it has done is I have a, a I have great body of work now. So when I talk to a new client that's manufacturing, I tell them before we meet, you must watch these two videos, videos I've already done in manufacturing. And most people say, well, you're shooting yourself in the foot, Hector. You're explaining a lot of the stuff you would have explained in your private training session. Yeah, I know. But I know that I charge double, triple what the next guy charges. And I only want to deal with the difficult stuff, the challenging stuff. And I want to be the one that solves the big expensive problems rather than helping someone how to create an inventory item. I prefer that they learn that through my video first. And that inspires them to ask the smarter, deeper, harder questions during my session. And that makes it much harder for me to be a commodity, right? Because anyone can explain the basics and anyone can charge to explain the basics, but not a whole bunch of people get in the deep end of the complicated portion of, let's say, manufacturing or inventory. So I'm okay with giving away, you know, three, four hours worth of videos that explains the basics that probably shoots myself in the foot of what would have been a, a three-day training. Now it's only one day or a two-day training, but I adjust my prices so I can afford to spend time creating basic content so I can charge more uh, delivering advanced content. So that would be the third phase is how we use those videos to have effective an effective pr uh, practice around it. So it also feels like it was worth the investment to do the whole thing. So that was it in eight minutes. <laughs> Hopefully I covered it all. I don't know if I went uh, too long on that.